Hi, my name is Simo Ahava. Uh, I'm the co-founder of two companies. One is called Simmer, which I founded with my wife in mid-pandemic. We're an online course platform for all things technical marketing. And the other role is as a co-founder of a digital analytics service boutique agency called 8 Cheap, both based in Finland. Ah, nice. And uh, what is your talk about today? Uh, I'm going to be talking about server-side technologies uh, from a data collection and processing point of view, talking about the way that browsers and privacy legislation is reducing the amount of usable data that we have on a daily basis, whether it's for search marketing or for business growth or for product development. And I'm going to be looking at one of the technologies that has been kind of lauded as the possible replacement for all our data problems, which is server-side, server-side tagging in particular. So I'm going to take a look at that kind of a critical look. Does it actually deliver on those promises? And if it doesn't, what does it actually do? And so it's going to be a, kind of a generalist topic for this audience, but hopefully something that people will you know, think about when they, when they head back to the office. Yeah, exactly. And can you give a little bit of information about what your vision is on that? So do you think your alternative will be the future or yeah um i i, I don't think like <laughs> that's a, that's a good question because the um server-side technologies why they are so topical right now is that the cost of cloud computing has gone down there are new services from google from facebook um related to these and uh, we're, we're kind of forced to look at server-side but now the reasons why we look at server-side are what determine if it's going to be the future or not so for those people who think that server-side is somehow a way to kind of circumvent legislation or to prevent ad blockers from locking our data or or a way to get first party data quickly and then deliver it to vendors for those i think it's not a durable solution i think i think it's it's you know privacy regulation doesn't care about the technology stack they're coming after you if you have server-side or not um, but for those of us who see server-side as a way of inserting control and protections for the user um, and between the user and the vendor in a way. So, for example, rather than allow Facebook to you know, collect data from the user without any limitations by just inserting their scripts on the site, we can use server-side to take control of the data flow to Facebook. So we can use it to remove personal data, to hide information about the user, to be more critical about what we send to Facebook. So server-side as an enhancement policy, as a, as a compliance solution, for those I think server-side definitely is the future. It's, it's one of the futures. It's a hybrid future in a way because we still need the client-side technologies. But we also have to change the way we work or think. Yeah, I think that's, the, that's always going to be the bigger problem. Like we're, For the last 30 years or so, we've been enjoying kind of an unparalleled and an un, unrestricted data fest. Like we, we've been allowed to collect whatever we want without any clue about data minimization principles or data retention policies. And now we're looking at this massive overcorrection because we have web browsers preventing the use of cookies. We have EU legislation preventing the use of cookies. And cookies are just one particular technology here, but it's a good analogy for them all. And we just have an, uh, a growing understanding in the general public that companies that are using our data are doing a pretty shitty job at it. You know, we have films like uh, Social Dilemma uh, increasing awareness about this problem. So it's not just an expertise niche where people grumble about this, but actually, you know, the general public knows this now as well. So we have a responsibility to kind of ride the wave of this overcorrection and hope that it will level out at some point. Because right now, for example, privacy legislation is just super strict. It's, it's over the top strict. It's preventing us from basically to put it bluntly, we can't use any services that are based in the U.S. That's that's what the EU legislation says today, basically. Yeah, so the Google to. Analytics problem we have right now. Google Analytics, but hey, Netflix, Spotify, Shopify, they're all U.S. US services. Um, well, not all of them. I, I did mention some that might not be, but, but U.S. services, cloud-based services uh, that are making difficult to collect data, which is personal data by nature. And do you think all these companies will go to the European cloud and, and is that part of the solution? Uh, I think that's that's kind of the logical train of conclusion right now. Whether it actually happens is I'm very, very doubtful because it's it would first of all require an, an investment process that should have started five years ago. Um, we, we should have started digging our own trenches. And at the same time, you know, the, the it's just not this sounds really douchey, but it's just not in the spirit of the internet to create those borders. We don't want another yeah. China in a way. We don't <laughs> want another great firewall. So I, I think there's, I think what lobbyists are, are doing right now and what I, what I hope the general public is waking up to and what I also hope that um, kind of the, the, the more, you know, more passionate privacy advocates will, will land on as well is some kind of a compromise.
Yeah. But the fact remains that we have the, the elephant in the room is that uh, we have a legislation in some countries like the United States, which is, isn't compatible with EU. So there's a fundamental difference how difference how personal data is treated. And in the EU, it's 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 enshrined in the Charter of Fundamental Rights. We have a right to privacy. It's it's as uh, inalienable as our right to freedom and as our right to free transport uh, between between Schengen nations, for example. Whereas in the U.S., that doesn't exist. So as yeah. long as there's that disparity, we can't negotiate it. And and no matter what technologies I talk about here, server side, client side, it's all basically just a big red herring with this ghost that looms in the background. But yeah, hopefully exactly. there's going to be a compromise because it's, you know, it's untenable. We, we can't yeah. give up U.S. services. The, a huge portion of the world's online data flows flow through or to the United States. Exactly. Looking forward uh, to your talk. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having me. Yes.